Welcome to She Wrote Plays, new takes on works from a century ago by neglected women playwrights, talented writers whose theatrical contributions have been largely forgotten, but their feminist themes are still resonant today. This series of audio dramas is produced by WTJU and the Department of Drama at the University of Virginia. It's made possible by a UVA faculty research grant for the arts. This season of She Wrote Plays features plays by Alice Gerstenberg, Rachel Crothers, Mae Miller, Susan Glassbell, and Mary Burrill. Episode number four, 14 by Alice Gerstenberg. 14 premiered on October 7th, 1919 at the Maitland Playhouse in San Francisco and is an example of the Little Theater movement. Alice Gerstenberg's significant contributions to the Little Theater movement mark her as a pivotal figure in the evolution of American theater during the early 20th century. Born in Chicago in 1885, Gerstenberg's career as a playwright and a proponent of experimental theater practices helped shape the landscape of modern drama. The Little Theater movement emerged in response to the dominance of commercial theater and sought to create intimate, non-commercial spaces where innovative plays could be performed. It aimed to foster a more authentic and artistically ambitious approach to theater, challenging the prevailing norms of spectacle and profit-driven productions. Though today some of Gerstenberg's plays may seem conventional and even conservative in their subject matter and relation to feminism, it must be noted that her plays focus on women's lives and that the characters are mostly, and often exclusively, women. And they all focus, to one degree or another, on the constraints and unwritten rules that women were expected to live within during those times. 14 was recorded in front of a live audience at the University of Virginia on April 7, 2024. The dining room of a New York residence. A long table running from left to right with a chair at each end and six chairs on each side is set elaborately for 14. As the play opens, the maid, Dunham. That's me! Right now, I'm hovering over the table to give it a few finishing dazzling touches. As I do, my employer... Mrs. Pringle enters the room. I'm a woman of fashion, handsome, and wearing a very lovely evening gown, which is elegant, but eye-popping in a tasteful, subdued way. I'm capable and executive, vivacious and charming. I'm carrying a corsage bouquet of flowers and the empty box of paper from which I have unwrapped them. Madam, look how pretty! Dunham, I just had a word with Mr. Harper that he was called away to the bedside of a friend who's very ill. He sent me these flowers. I don't approve of young men refusing dinner invitations at the very last minute. I'll take the box and the paper. Take the box and paper, Dunham. It's too bad. After you've set the table so beautifully. And it's getting so late, someone might be coming any moment. How's Cook? Cook's in a temper, madam. I'm glad to hear it. She's like an actress. The better the temper, the better the performance. As long as she serves us a good dinner, I don't care how much she swears. The rest of you can just keep out of her way. Where's Gustav? There's such an awful blizzard out. He's sweeping off the sidewalk. Oh, yes, I should have ordered an awning. But who expected a storm like this? I did. I did tell you that the weather... I don't generally put a lot of stock in the meteorological musings of housemaids, Dunham. Oh, where is... Elaine, that's me. I'm a young debutante in an evening gown that some, like Mother, might call classic, and others, like me, might call dowdy. Here are the place cards, Mother, and the diagram. Shall I put them around? Yes, dear. I'm going up to look after your father. He's so helpless about his ties. Remove one plate, Dunham. Remove one plate? But, madam, you wouldn't sit down with thirteen. Thirteen? We can never sit down with thirteen. That's all due to Mr. Harper's negligence. Sick friend, nothing. He's just one of those careless men who never answer their invitations in time and who suddenly acquire sick friends. Now look at all the trouble he's put me to. Thirteen. I wonder whom I could get to come in the last minute. Quick, Elaine, help me think. Uh, There's always Uncle George. He never opens his mouth. Mr. Scott, madam. He always tells a joke or two. Why, yes, Dunham. That's very clever of you. Hello, Central. Lakeview, 5971. At once, please. Elaine, dear, your hair's much too tight. Pull it out. Pull it out. Oh, come here. May I speak to Mr. Scott? Well, this is Mrs. Pringle speaking from across the street. 
Yes. When Mr. Scott comes in, please tell him to call me up right away. I want him to dine with us. In about ten minutes. Ow! Stop pulling my hair, Mother! It has to be fluffier! Ow! Have him call me right away as soon as he gets in. Now, if he shouldn't get the message... Elaine, what'll I do if he doesn't get the message? Well, I don't have to be at the table. It's your party anyway. Everybody's married and older than I am. Look at my seating diagram. Look at it. Didn't I put you next to Oliver Farnsworth? The single Oliver Farnsworth? Millions. He's worth millions. Well, he won't be giving me any. Can he marry you? Aren't you going to try to make a good match for yourself? I fling every eligible man I can at your head. Can't you finish the rest yourself? It's no use trying to marry me off to anyone as important as he is. He frightens me to death. I lose my tongue. I'm as afraid of him as I'd be afraid of the Prince of Wales. The Prince of Wales? Oh, what I wouldn't give to have the Prince of Wales in my house. New York has lost its heart to him. I was just telling Mr. Farnsworth yesterday that I'd give anything to have the prince here. I would establish my social position for life. Oh, dear me. Hello? Mrs. Sedgwick? Yes, this is Mrs. Pringle. What? No. Oh, caught in a snowdrift. Can't get another car? What a shame. Good. The widow can't come. That leaves us 12. Remove two plates, Dunham. Elaine, change the table cards. That's a shame, Mrs. Sedgwick. I'm heartbroken. Oh, my dear, how can we get along without you? But have you really tried? Oh, I'm reduced to tears. Goodbye, dear. Wonderful. I'll check on Mr. Scott. Central, give me Lakeview 5971. Dunham with two less. You can save two cocktails and at least four glasses of champagne. Has Mr. Scott come in yet? Well, don't give him the message. I telephoned before about crossing the street to Mrs. Pringle's for dinner. It's too late. You understand? But, Mother, if you only have 12 people, Father can't sit at the head of the table. But he has to sit at the head. It looks too undignified when the man of the house is pushed to the side. There's no other way. There must be a woman at each end. These absurd rules of etiquette. Why are we such slaves to them? Well, then don't be. Don't be. Don't be? Have you become a communist, Elaine? Etiquette is all that keeps us from total chaos and separates us from the apes and the farmers. Yes, 12 is an impossible number. And I don't want to put any of these women at the head. There's Mrs. Darby. Such a cat. I wouldn't give her the honor. And Mrs. Answer it, Dunham. Hello? Mrs. Pringle's residence. A message? Yes, sir. What, sir? Mr. Darby, the doctor says your baby has the chicken pox. Chicken pox, Elaine! Mother! Yes, sir. Mr. Darby sends his apologies, but owing to the transmutability of the disease, Mr. and Mrs. Darby feel obliged to regret. And also their house guests, Mr. and Mrs. Fleetwood. That's four out! Then you're only eight! Quick, the plate's done him! I'll move the chairs. Watch out! Well, I'll get the silverware. Watch out! Not there. Look out for the... No, no. not there. Move the glasses. No, over here. Look out! This my foot! There. Now, wasn't that simple, Dunham? Well, don't we know someone to invite the last minute? The Hatwoods? They don't serve drinks when they entertain. They're not drinking mine. The Greens? No, they'll try to convert us to... What's their religion again? Mr. Conley. No, he always accepts and never shows up. Hester Longley. Not at the same table with you and Oliver Farnsworth. She's more clever and prettier than you. Mormons. Oh, the Seventh Avenue Morgans. That's a thought. No, Mormons. Mormons. Why are you talking in such a strange language? That's the religion. Well, don't be ridiculous. The Morgans are Episcopalian. The Tuppers. The Tuppers. Good heavens, Elaine. Six in the family. But that would get us back to 14. And father could sit at the head of the table. Right. Then call them. I'll rush and tell your father to wait in the drawing room. Operator, Ridgeway 9325. Thank you. Hello? This is Elaine Pringle. What tupper am I speaking to? Oh, Ella, hello. I hope you haven't finished your dinner. We had a party arranged here, and at the last moment, everybody's been dropping out. The blizzard. Can't you flock your family around the corner to eat with us immediately? Oh, you would! Oh, 
fine. Six more plates, Dunham. What, Ella? Oh. 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 Dunham, get mother quick. Yes, Ella. Well, yes, uh, it's all right. I, I mean, of course. I love it. Love it. <laughs> yes, see you soon. Mother! What's the matter? No, I've done it. I've just done it. But you were near, Mother. I, I couldn't get out of it. I just couldn't. Oh, I've ruined everything. What is it? So I invited Ella and the family, and she accepted. And then she said they had two house guests, and would it be all right for them to come? And then I said it would, and now we're sixteen. Sixteen? But, madam, the table's not that long. Oh. Elaine, that's just like you. No tact. No worldly wisdom. If I'd been at the phone, I'd have politely said that my table... But you weren't at the phone. You want to attend to such messages yourself. You know I always lose my head. But the dishes, madam, and we only have 14 squabs. I won't eat any. I will not be disgraced. We'll have to make the best of it. And insert another board. Dunham! I'm right here. I don't sneak up on me like that. What about the squabs? How should I know? Tell the cook to think of something. But, Mother... I don't have to sit at the table. You're going to sit right next to Oliver Farnsworth, and you're going to be captivating. Now, I don't wish to hear another word about it. Maybe we can squeeze them in without all the work of adding another board. If I move the plates and chairs closer... Have you forgotten that Mr. Tupper weighs something like 280 pounds, and Mrs. Connolly has no waistline? It can't be done. Cook is furious, madam. She says she's only prepared for 14. This is an emergency. Would she say that if she were on the Titanic? Well, probably not. Tell her to open cans of soup and vegetables. But the ice cream forms and the gelatine molds. Well, I'll say I don't like them. And I'll say I'm on a diet. But I really wouldn't have to be at the table. Oliver Farnsworth, Elaine Oliver Farnsworth. Oh, don't answer it. It's driving me mad. I'll answer it. Hello. Yes, this is Mrs. Pringle. Oh, a bad cold. Yes! Uh, uh, I mean, no. I, I mean, Jessica, you poor dear. A fever? Oh, that's even better. Oh, I mean, worse. Oh, Jessica, you poor dear. Yes, your husband's right. It will be foolhardy. You both need to stay home. Put on a mustard plaster. Or a hot toddy. I'm so sorry. Hot toddy! Bye! Fourteen! Just as I planned it. But the cards are all wrong. Only six are coming who were invited originally. You'll have to make another diagram. How do you want them seated? Give me the cards. Here are some fresh cards. Oh, what a mess. I spent hours over that diagram. So much depends upon having guests seated harmoniously. Oh, there's the front door bell, Dunham. I told Annie to answer it for you, but go. Peek into the drawing room and tell me who it is. Of course, madam. Don't of course me. Just do it. Oh, you murderous instrument! What have you to say now? What? Hello? Who? Mr. Farnsworth. It's so nice to hear your voice. N no, you're his secretary. He's what? Instructed you to make his excuses. He had to leave for Boston at once on very important business. Oh, I bet, baby, I'll just bet. At the last moment like this, no regard for a hostess's feelings, no regard for the effort she goes to to provide an evening's enjoyment. And he promised he would come, business. I don't believe it. He didn't want to exert himself. Selfishness, downright rudeness, and worth millions. Oh, just a match for you, Elaine. And I was bound you should meet him and sit next to him at the table. And now I don't know when I can give you a chance like that again. Now you'll end up lonely and alone and with a dozen Dalmatians. I'll never speak to him again. I won't be treated that way. Perhaps he really did have business and was called away. I'm one of the most important hostesses in this city. People clamoring to receive my invitations, all my affairs a success. I can't have a failure. He was my most important guest. And now not coming. Now I will have to stay away from the table. His not coming makes us 13 again. Fine. Go to bed. Go up to the nursery. I'll send you milk and crackers. But, Mother, it's not my fault that he had business out of town. Yes, it is. If you'd perk up a bit and not be so timid and make something of yourself, he would hear about your attractions from other men and be curious to meet you himself. Oh, what a family I have. No one to help me with my ambitions. Go to bed. It was Mr. Scott, madam. Mr. Scott. 
but I telephoned his maid to tell him not to come. Maybe he didn't get the message. I heard him explaining to Mr. Pringle how happy he was to receive your telephone invitation. Well, that makes you 13 again. Unless you don't want me to go to bed. Of course I don't want you to go to bed. What are you talking about? We're back to where we started. 14, Dunham! I'll get the cocktails ready, madam. Annie told me there were several motors making their way through the snow. Oh, I won't answer it. I should say not. Uh, hello? What is it? Yes. Yes, Mrs. Tupper. Yes, Mrs. Tupper. But now you must come. We're prepared for you. Yes, for eight of you. Your daughter told my daughter about your house guests and we're delighted to have them. But now we're set for you. But every plate is set. But your daughter was quite right to ask. But you must come now. Uh, of course my daughter had authority to invite the guests. Oh, eight isn't at all a big number. There is room. Oh, the table's all set. But I beg of you. But, but my dear, you're not imposing. My, my dear, my dear. Now what do you think of that? Mrs. Tupper is perfectly furious at Ella for telling you about the house guests and says Ella has no tact, that nothing would induce her to bring eight when we invited six, so she's leaving Ella and Henry at home. Only six are coming. Remove two plates, Dunham. We're twelve after all. But if you leave at twelve, Father can't sit at the end of the table. Oh, I'll never entertain again, never. People ought to know whether they're coming or not. But they accept and regret and regret and accept. I'll go check on Cook, madam. No, you will not. You will stay here. Why? I don't know. Oh, oh just go. Check on Cook, why don't you? This is my last dinner party, my very last. A haphazard crowd hurried together when I planned everything so beautifully. Now, how shall I seat them? If I put Mr. Tupper here and Mrs. Conley there, then Mrs. Tupper has to sit next to her husband. And if I want Mr. Scott there, oh, it's impossible. I might as well put their names in a hat and draw them out at random. I'll never again. I'm th through with society, with parties, with friends. They'll miss my entertainments. They'll wish they'd been more considerate. Oh, I'm th through with men like Oliver Farnsworth. I don't care how rich they are. Off on business nonsense. He didn't want to come. Didn't want to meet a sweet, pretty girl didn't want to marry her. Well, he's not good enough for you. Don't you marry him, Elaine. Don't you dare marry him. I won't let you marry him. Do you hear? If you tried to elope, I'd break it off. I'd break his neck. Yes, I would. Madam. Why are you back, Dunham? Why do you torture me so? A note from Mr. Farnsworth. A note from Mr. Farnsworth? Yes, madam. There are two strange gentlemen in the lower hall. They presented this letter. He said he was the secretary. Mrs. Pringle rips open the envelope and reads the note. All of the other guests are upstairs in the drawing room, madam. I counted 12 in all, including you and Mr. Pringle and Miss Elaine. Oh, my word. What's it say, mother? But the two gentlemen downstairs are waiting for your answer. <gasps> the one gentleman's face looked very familiar, madam, but I just can't place him. <laughs> Although, I'm sure I've seen his face somewhere. Seen his face somewhere? Oh, my goodness, Elaine, it's the Prince of Wales. <laughs> the secretary said he called you earlier, but that you cut off the telephone or hung up. And he doesn't know why you said, I'll bet, baby. He was about to tell you that Mr. Farnsworth knew that the blizzard had prevented his highness from keeping an engagement way uptown the and- The Prince of Wales sitting in my lower hall waiting for me to ask him to dinner. But we'll be 13 again. But Miss Elaine, there's also his secretary. Certainly, Elaine. You forgot the secretary. We shall be 14 at dinner, exactly how I planned. Serve the cocktails, Dunham. The guests may sit anywhere they choose. I shall bring the prince in with me. But, Mother, wasn't it nice of Oliver Farnsworth to send a prince in his place? Well, of course he did, Elaine. Oliver Farnsworth is the most considerate of men. I think I shall like Mr. Farnsworth. You will not. It's, it's too late to like Mr. Farnsworth. It's time now to like the prince. 
Let us go and meet the Prince of Wales. Oh, and Elaine, dear, be captivating. You've been listening to 14 by Alice Gerstenberg. The part of Mrs. Horace Pringle was played by Julia Robertson. Elaine was played by Evelyn Gary. And Dunham was played by Megan Quo. 14 was adapted and directed by Doug Grissom, with sound design by Lewis Reining. The recording engineer for all plays is Lewis Reining. The executive producer of She Wrote Plays is Nathan Moore. And I'm Mandy Shuker. Music in this episode by Blue Dot Sessions. You can hear all the plays in this series at shewroteplays.org.